Growth hack your brand and then destroy anything that moves. You need to grind hustle your platform manifest. It's all about entropy, elegance, and finance. Blockchain. Invest in real estate every day. Invest in real estate every morning. You need to mind hack the mind shackles that are grabbing your mind. Entrepreneurs. 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 Entrepreneur. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a day. Eat the man who just fished and you'll eat for a lifetime. Bartons! Business Money Hacks. Welcome to Business Money Hacks. My name is Dustin Taylor Hahn. And I'm Bridge Stewart. And today uh, we're going to be talking with a very interesting guest. Uh, but first, uh, we want to talk about what it means to sort of uh, listen in the modern age, listen in this time. And mm -hmm. really, you, you just shouldn't be listening is what we're saying. You shouldn't be listening to anybody. Yeah, plug your ears up and just stop out all the noise. You know, they talk about noise pollution. I mean, I don't even like to listen to myself sometimes. Most of the time, there's this voice in my head telling me to do things. Oh, yeah. And I try yeah, my darndest yeah. to, to just shut it out. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the voice in my head is always telling me to do these things, and I, I have to turn that thing off. Otherwise, uh, things could get very, uh, very intense, very violent. Um, yeah, noise pollution, noise sewage is, is what it really is, is that everyone is just spewing these opinions and these thoughts and man, it's pretty wild. Let me tell you that. It's garbage. It's garbage. If we all just had some sort of silent, just silence for, for one hour a day, and this is just a, a sort of a brain idea. An hour? I'm, I'm thinking hours. I'm thinking multiple hours here. I, I, uh... Look, you got to turn it all off for a, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to say six months. Just go into a room and turn it off. Cocoon. Turn off the spigot. There's a voice in my head. You know, there's, there's the voice, obviously, the voice in my head telling me no. You know, there's the other voice in my head telling me, yes, yes, go with this venture. And then, you know, obviously that third voice that's telling you you're a bad, bad boy. Um, but you mentioned cocoon. Yeah. I like that concept of cocooning oh, yeah. yourself. Drowning out all the noise. You've got but... a cocoon. It is crucial to cocoon. I'm actually, uh, I've actually built a cocoon in my room. It's just a, just a beautiful silk cocoon that uh, I'm hanging out in. Like I'm, uh, let's just say I'm, I'm hanging out in that cocoon. Whew, 12, 13 hours a day. And it, let me tell you, it's doing wonders for so me. So wait, you have an actual cocoon. Yeah. Yeah. I've built a cocoon. It was expensive, but uh, yeah, I'm sort of just, uh, just sort of gestating. hibernating, kind of gestating, uh, sort of in a chrysalis phase, just cocooning. Oh, I can't wait to see what comes of that. I might not even come out. Why, why, why become a butterfly when you can just cocoon? So wait, you're you're running for president still, right? Yeah, I mean, how, I mean how, don't you need to be shaking hands and kissing babies and all well, that? Well, I'm taking meetings in in okay. the room, and I'm in my cocoon, of course. So uh, people will, you know, enter my office and they will address the cocoon, and uh, that's just sort of how I've been interacting with people lately. So I imagine this would also lead into the office of the presidency. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, that would what, be... What would the Oval Office look like? It would probably look like some sort of caterpillar den. Uh, just a lot of large leaves surrounding the Oval Office and heads of state coming into the Oval Office and addressing this cocoon. Just dropping morsels of food and then they can enter. I think that's what George Washington imagined. Uh, at the beginning of the United States was just this large cocoon that people around the world would address. Where where can you get this type of silk? I know that you have very, oh. very fancy taste. I mean, this can't just be regular silk. Well, where does the silk come from? Deep Asia. Deep, deep Asia. You can't get this silk anywhere else. And uh, <laughs> it is pretty expensive. So, yeah, I, I highly recommend investing in Asian silk. Speaking of cocooning and, and shutting yourself out, we have a very special guest on. Um, you may have seen some of his seminars. Uh, he, he does a lot of advertising on YouTube, you know, the ads before videos. Anthony Hawk, it's so great to have you on. You saw my YouTube ads, huh? We saw yeah. them. Yeah, we you saw, saw those ads. A lot of uh, They targeted you. They targeted you, man. I've been targeted. Uh, there's yeah, a target I got on you. My... So, gotcha. so why so many ads? I mean, I know that obviously people, you, you have the exposure, um, but do you have the clout at this point? Well, here's the thing. I'm a life coach for billionaires. Billionaires 
only. The world could use some more billionaires because my clientele could only be so large. So the more ads I have out there, the more people will be like, I gotta be a billionaire so I can be told what to do by the Anthony Hawk. I've always argued that everybody should be a billionaire. It seems like that there's a lot of resistance to this, but you're in this belief that there mm -hmm. needs to be more billionaires that you could thus coach, essentially. I think everyone should be a billionaire. Can everyone be a billionaire? No, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to right. get there. Wow. So if everybody hires Anthony Hawk, you know, if every aspiring entrepreneur, everyone, a, a small business owner hires Anthony Hawk, are you promising the billionaire lifestyle? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Did you say small business owner hires Anthony Hawk? Is that what you said? Yeah, he was talking about uh, small business. He, you're, you're, that's, you're not interested <laughs> in that. No, 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 no. It's big business only, baby. Big business. If you have $999 million, come back when you've made your next million. Wow. Okay. So only the big fish for the hawk. Only the big fish, like Bridge and Dustin. Although, Dustin, there was a year there where you didn't quite meet the threshold. But well, Bridge has that's been right. on for the <laughs> I've cocooned time. myself. Uh, that, yeah, was you have certainly cocooned. Cocooned. that was my cocooning year. I've cocooned in my house. Well, I'm still cocooning in, in your house. I know that you're here, too. Uh, I'm in one of your rooms. Yeah. Uh, try to guess which one I'm in. It's the bedroom, Bridge. It's the bedroom. <laughs> I, I hope that's not true. I because uh, he'll he'll sneak in there sometimes, and I'll have to have to chase him out with a broom. It's uh, pretty awkward. Um, that sounds pretty exciting. One. Uh, uh, so, how did you get into this? How uh, like did you start off coaching billionaires, or did you sort of work your way up, millionaire, multimillionaire, then billionaire? You know, I started as a plumber. I was a plumber, and I Oof. was making forty dollars a oh week, God. and you know, just plumbing toilets all over. And I didn't know I, plumbers I, you know, made so so little amount forty dollars a week. It was a small rural town, and we didn't have much money. There was a coin shortage as well. Um, Jesus. So, yeah, what'd you say? Jeez, wow. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that's what I was saying back then. I was saying, geez, wow. Come on, I, I, I got to be better than this. And one day, I was in the bathroom, I was plunging a toilet, and I caught myself in the mirror, and I said are better than this. You are a billionaire life coach. And from there, I just decided that's my new life. And so I jumped straight past thousands, millions. I went straight to billionaires. I toyed with, you know, life coaching some millionaires, but they just didn't quite have um, the edge. Uh, that's something I talk about all the time is how you got to have that edge. Yeah, and you got to find the edge. You can't just be a circle. You got to be a rectangular. You got to have an edge. A parallelogram. Well, that must have been pretty difficult because, uh, I mean, like, if some plumber came up to me on the street and was like, hey, I've got some advice for you, I, I certainly wouldn't listen to that plumber. That would be, uh, that'd be pretty difficult to listen to that man. Well, here's where you're wrong, Bridge. That day when I approached you on 42nd Street in New York City, I was wearing a suit and a tie. My hair was slicked back. My suit sure. had edges, and I said, so hey, slick. you look like a billionaire. And you said, that's right, I'm a, I am a billionaire. And I said, I'm a billionaire life coach. But in fact, the day before I was in Dayton, Ohio, plunging a toilet, I changed my mindset. So you did listen to a plumber, and you're still listening to that same plumber today. You're right. I'm uh, kind of ashamed of myself for admitting that, but you're right. I, had to, I listened to a plumber. Yep. Did you finish the job, the plumbing job? I walked right out of that bathroom. Yeah. I think it's still clogged today, actually. Well, I want to know more about this coin shortage. Is that going to be something we're going to have to worry about in the future? It's what you're worrying about right now. There are no coins left. No coins. It costs more money to make a coin than it, than, than a coin. So why are you, why I mean, are you making I, coins? You're right. I can't even remember the last time I saw a coin. I mean, gold coins, obviously. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a bathtub, hot tub full of that. A jacuzzi were just blasting <laughs> coins at me constantly. Just a coin fountain. But, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think I've seen like a quarter in six, seven years. I can't tell you the last time I even thought of a quarter. So, Mr. Hawk, I mean, you're talking about <laughs> the fact that coins cost more money to make a coin than a coin is actually worth. Shouldn't you be talking right. to the National Treasury? And they deal with... They deal in trillions. So are you up at that level in the trillions? Or are you are you kind of stuck in the billionaire level? Well, they, they deal in trillions, but the people who work there only make millions. And so I'd love to give them advice, but they're not quite up in the upper echelon yet. Well, I think it is, you know, we are going through such a hard time. And when I say we, I mean CEOs and billionaires. Mm -hmm. it is, it's a rough time for this us. This is yeah. so hard. It is so hard. I mean, I've literally built a cocoon in my office. 
it, it's just I think you are doing such a service mm-hmm. to the world by advising these people and helping them out because they're they're have a lot of troubles. Billionaires. Yeah. Well, I mean, just think of this list. I mean, Jeff Bezos, Bill mm. Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, um, so and his brother Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yes, his brother Mark Zuckerberg. He sells the biggest Tupperware uh, seller in the country. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. He's a uh, he's a strange man, yeah. Zuckerberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg. He's also a billionaire. He's uh, he's on the lower echelon. He's a guy going to. Oh, this Mark Tupperware also. It's yeah. Mark Tupperware. Mark Zipperberg. He invents. <laughs> he makes zippers for pants. But not for coats. And then there's Dark Zipperberg. He makes you know zippers for dark uh, jackets and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Downy down jackets rather. Dark mm-hmm. Zipperberg. Yeah. yeah. And down Zipperberg as well. Down Zipperberg, that's right. And that they, there was an issue with them using geese uh to mm-hmm. fill uh, that was a that was a that was a big right. deal. Right. So they've actually down. recently pivoted to Duck Zipperberg. Um and, and so far they're doing pretty well. Wow. wow. So you advise all of these men? Um all these men and the one thing that ties them all together is they are they need help. They're sad. They're sad. Is what they're is, struggling. They're very sad. It's hard. You feel like you're getting pulled in so many different directions when you're at this upper echelon. You know, like I said, I mean, one voice is telling me no. The other one's saying yes, yes. And the other one's saying you're a bad, bad boy. I mean, right. how are we supposed to And how many times, man- do I, manage how many times a day do I remind you that you are a bad, bad boy? I say it whenever you're generally eating my food and I have to bring a broom out again and chew you away from my food. It's uh, it's become quite a thing. You, you're just. When are you gonna move out? By the way, what's that? It's a, When are you gonna move out? We got that other house next door. I'm still working on. Yeah, it. it's quite loud. The construction next door. It yeah. is extremely loud. We're building a lot more. We're building a water park. Now you see, this is what I'm talking about. This, this, that noise. That noise. The construction. That's the noise in your head. It's constant, right? You feel it always, right? Yeah. It's incessant. That's what I'm talking about. That's what every single one of these billionaires has. They all have this noise in their head, this voice in their head saying you're a bad, bad boy. And I have to remind them you are a bad, bad boy. So, Anthony, I'm Dark Zipperberg. I'm Duck, Zop- uh, I'm Duck <laughs> Zipperberg. And I hire Anthony Hawk uh, to be my <laughs> advisor. I mean, what do you call yourself? A life coach. A life co- Oh, well, there you go. I-, I hire you to be my life coach. What is step one? Visual. Besides, I'm a... Bad, bad boy, well, which we have discussed, and I, I would appreciate if we would stop, we would kind of cut that one out. Well, but, I mean, you are a bad, bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, step one it actually is related to what you just said. So I, I said visualize. Visualize yourself on the top of a mountain, and behind mm. you is a small little winged creature with a whip saying, you are a bad, bad boy, and whipping you gently on the back. Gently. Mm. And then you tumble down the mountain. You tumble down the mountain and you find yourself in a small, small town and you're poor. And you are a poor person. You are poor Ugh. and ugly. Mm. And that's something that no billionaire wants to really... That's step one. So, okay, how did you come up with this? I mean, I know you had this sort of uh, revelation in a, in a toilet room, apparently, to uh, become an advisor to the, the wealthy, but uh, how did you sort of come up with this? Is there like a manifesto that you've come up with, or what? how did this happen? It came to me in a dream. I was dreaming one night. I was sleeping. I don't get much sleep. I sleep about an hour and a half every day, you know, because uh, you got to have enough sleep so you can function, but you don't want to waste the day. You guys haven't slept in how long? How long have you it's been since? I mean, I, ha- I have night terrors, but Bridge, do you sleep in your cocoon or is it more like... Oh, yeah. I've, I've actually been getting a lot of sleep. I've been... Mmm. Cocoon Bridge. sleep. What? Bridge. What? Oh, that is okay. A, that's not what I told you. I told I'm, you, so, don't I'm sleep. sorry. Yeah, I don't know, sleep. but the cocoon sleep. Mm. Never sleep on your enemies. I know, but the enemies. Sometimes I'm just in that cocoon, and, and the voice comes to me and says, "The enemies can wait. I can cocoon yeah. right." You now. see, Dustin, this is why. This is why you're a better, uh, a better client of mine than than Bridge. This yeah, I mean, for working with you. Dustin. I mean, I just started, and I I recognize completely. I mean, mm-hmm. when can I stop saying that to myself? When does that stop? Um, well, what's the next step? Here? You want to move on to step two, then? Yeah, I mean, that would step be great. two is I'll... another visualization technique, but it actually involves a physical a- activity, um, and so we could do that now if you want to. This, wow. Aside from dreaming that you're on top of a mountain and somebody is whipping you incessantly, that's a mindset. Yeah, you, you're going to be continually falling down this mountain. 
um, and walking back up and then falling. It's like Sisyphus, except instead of the rock, you're just f- you're you're not pushing a rock. You're just you're falling just down. Being pushed down a mountain. You you are the rock. Before we get up to step two, what's the goal here? Because that's something you've been very very vague about. Like, what are we getting to? Is is it I can be a trillionaire? Is that the goal, or is there a goal? Well, there's no such thing as a trillionaire yet. Uh, and if there were, uh, I'd be the first to be there. Okay, so uh, the, the goal is is tailored to each particular client. So in your life, where do you feel that you are lacking, and particularly where do you feel that you are a bad bad boy? Well, is this step two? Yeah, is that what we're facing? Because uh, I yeah. don't I don't want Dustin to get ahead of me. Well, <laughs> you're still working on step one. I know, I know, but. You, you can't keep sleeping. No, You're sleeping. No, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to step two first. Well, I'm already at step two, Bridge. And so get me to. Step no. Two. No. 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 I'm at step two already. I want to get to step three. No, we didn't. Bridge, even, we wait. didn't even start. Step no, Anthony two. said I was this in is, step two, no. and now I can go to step three. Anthony. No, I'm ahead of you. No, I want to. This is no. I am ahead of you. I'm always ahead of you. I'm actually wondering if you should be giving out this information on the podcast for the folks who are listening. Is this information this that is, you should be? I thought this was solely for billionaires. You told me this this podcast was only for billionaires. Unfortunately, there are people that, you know, aren't billionaires that do listen to this. I mean, there's a few millionaires, even maybe a couple thousand. There might be a few hundred heirs. A um, couple hundred heirs. Well, how, how can you convince me to stay? How can you? How could you convince me to stay? How about we just point? tell everybody who – how about we just announce right now, if you're not a billionaire, uh, just stop listening. Please. 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 Thanks, guys. Okay, so now only the billionaires are listening. We did it. Okay, great. Uh, all right, well, moving on to the uh, step two. Step two, Dustin, you'll be participating in this bridge. You'll be watching. No, step that no, I want to. I want to participate. I'm going to call this step three because I've already gone way past step two in my head. <sighs> okay, well, tell tell yourself whatever you, if you want. But if I'm... you will walk out the back door of the house right now, you'll see uh, there is a uh, campfire that has been built by one of my associates. You, do you see it? I don't want to let Bridge know where I am inside of his house, but I, I do see I it. Okay, so. On the back of this, uh, sorry, in the backyard, this campfire is here, and, and over it we have a little uh, a spick. Is that what it's called? A spick where you, like, where you roast a pig? A spigot. A spick. A spigot, yep. A spick or a spigot? I don't want to say spick anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to call it a spigot because you are a plumber, and that sounds like right. it's a water device. All right, you have a, you have, oh, it's a spit. A spit. Yeah, I see it. I see you've cooked, yeah, you see you've, it. You've cooked a ham, and he's uh, I've cooked a ham, and now my associate is taking it off. You see, he's taking it off of the spit. The ham is there. The ham is to be eaten by you after you put yourself on the spit, because you're I, a I, dirty little bad boy pig. I, I just want to clarify. Somebody is starting a fire in my backyard. Is that that's what's happening? Mm-hmm. Well, once again, uh, it seems this this podcast is ruining my house. But, uh, all right, I mean, if it helps Dustin get through whatever weird, dark trauma he's facing, uh, let's let's run through the eye of the needle here, I guess. It's okay. There was a big tree in your backyard, and we chopped it down for the wood, so it's all sustainably sore. I just want the record to be known that, Bridge, you also do participate in Anthony Hawk's program. So, I mean, my problems and your problems, they're connected, deeply connected. And I almost feel like I want to get into that silk bed of yours and kind of cocoon. There's no way you're getting in my cocoon. I'll find and, a way. Uh, also, I mean, comparing your problems to mine is like comparing schizophrenia to a headache. I mean, like, listen, you've got some deep... Well, I mean, you have an eating disorder. I do not have You have, have an, an eating, eating disorder. disorder. Yeah, you do. I think that's why Anthony I put the pig in the not. back of your back. Yeah. I, could, I could lose... 70, 80 more pounds. That's it. And Don't even look at that pig, Bridge. I, Avert your gaze. No, I, I, I wouldn't eat the pig. I wouldn't eat any. I mean, I've, I've eaten lots of ham. about three, lots of ham, a couple crackers. And uh, let's just say I, I could lose a little bit more. But other than that, I feel like I'm, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm pretty hungry, but uh, I, I'm looking good. How many uh, billionaires would you say have deeply seated issues that they haven't dealt with? Pretty much every single one of them, aside from from Bezos. Bezos is perfect. He's a golden um, god. Yeah. He's a golden god. Oh, god, yeah. And I'm so glad that he is single again, single and ready to mingle, uh, because I, I, I pushed him for years. Uh, it was an unhealthy marriage. She was holding him back, clearly. I mean, look at his net worth before the divorce and look at his net worth after the divorce. I mean, he is he is a, a goose, a golden goose god. A golden goose god. And he's a good, good boy. What I think is interesting about Bezos is that if it, he has a full head of hair. 
he could grow a gorgeous mane. <laughs> he uh, he refuses. He uh, people want it. People have been clamoring for it, and he says no. Uh, if I gave you everything, uh, God doesn't give his disciples everything. Mm-hmm. Is it true that Jeff Bezos' wife uh, would wake up every morning and put his hand in a, a foreman grill? She would. Was that yeah. was that was that was kind of a destructive behavior? Well, I can see. I, you know, I've heard about this technique before. Actually, I mean, wake up, put your hand in a foreman grill, keeps you sharp. <laughs> keeps right. you it keeps it keeps you on your toes it's sort of like a morning exercise except you're sticking your hand in a grill keeps you on your toes because you have no use of your hands so, so you gotta you gotta shake hands shake feet mm-hmm. well you walk into a room and you basically it short circuits your need to shake hands because shaking hands is immediately coming eye level with someone and saying hey we're on the same level but if you don't have hands you can't shake anybody's hands so you just stand with them they, they put their hand out and you just kind of nod at them and then they realize oh fuck he doesn't have hands and they feel like like awful and immediately boom you got the upper hand yeah well i do that often too i shake my head people will outstretch their hand and i just shake mm-hmm. and uh they realize okay now i know who i'm dealing this guy with business. Mm-hmm. that was you know the first time i met you i walked up to you on the street and this was the one mistake i've ever made in my life i walked up to you on the street and i said you look like a billionaire and you said that's right and i put my hand out and you shook your head and I thought, oh, yep. now you're in the big league talk. That's how billionaires greet each other. They just mm-hmm. walk up and start shaking and their start heads shaking at one another. Heads. That's right. By the way, I have to say, uh, I really do appreciate how um, not once on this uh, little interview have you guys called me Tony Hawk. Uh, you've used my full name. Uh, it is unfortunate that people do get me confused with the professional skater. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't want to compare. I mean, man, that Tony Hawk is so cool. Yeah. Like, uh, Tony well, Hawk is is so cool. Like, well, I mean, we wouldn't, you know, mix you up with that guy. Well, he's, yeah, his net worth is only $140 million, so yeah, he's not that not that cool. Yeah, but did you see him do, he did like a 1080. He did like a 1080. Man, Tony Hawk is so sick. I would eat a ham with Tony Hawk in a second. I would roll out the red carpet for Tony oh Hawk. My Just God. roll out that carpet and bring him a ham. He's just a really, a really, really cool guy. Yeah, you know? he's cool. He's fine. I bet he's really friendly, too. Like, like, just like you just get to know him and you're like, wow, Tony Hawk, you're really cool. I like you. I heard Tony Hawk when you meet him. He nods his head, yes. Instead of shaking his head, he's beyond billionaire. I, I usually just hate non-billionaires. I, I hate people that aren't worth a billion dollars. But Tony Hawk, I mean, you got to make an exception for Tony Hawk. He's he's the best human. I bet he's a really good roller skater, too. Yeah, Tony Hawk is the best. I love Tony, Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk can never die. Like a father. Well, it was really nice uh, seeing you guys. It was really great to be here. Um, oh, but, I, I mean, uh, you're not a... You're not offended, right, by by the fact that we love Tony Hawk so much and how cool he is? You know, if I'm going to be honest, um, fucking yeah. Well, have you ever considered changing your name from Anthony Hawk to maybe like uh, Zimmerman Hawk or, I, or uh, whatever? No, I changed my name to Anthony Hawk. You changed it to Well, maybe, maybe you changed my it. Name, my name was Bill Craig. Ooh. And I was a plumber, and I changed that my really name. That really works for, as a plumber name. Bill Craig. That's yeah, like it was a great, a great plumber, plumber name. name. I, I was a very successful plumber in my town, even though there was a coin shortage and I didn't get paid very much money. Okay, but I changed my name to Anthony Hawk, not knowing that there was somebody named Tony Hawk, who apparently was this really cool really guy, cool, real famous. Who's so cool, famous and America's oh. father. Everyone wants to be his dad. The next okay? George Washington. He's the next George Washington. If I were you, I would have changed my name to like Gregory Bills. That sounds like a real strong name. Fuck. It's got your last name, Craig. Craig. That's Bills. so good. Gregory Bills. Yeah, I'm shocked that you didn't know who Tony Hawk is. That's like, yeah, it's like not knowing who Jesus is. Yeah, wait, I who's mean, it's Jesus? To me, it sounds like we're... Um, I'm sorry, wait, wait, who are you talking about? He's He was kind Jesus. of, uh, he was sort of like the Jeff Bezos of like the year zero. Some people say that Jeff Bezos is the reincarnation of Jesus. Oh, that would make sense. He is a golden god. Yeah, Jeff Jesus. Oh, so he Jeff, ch- Jeff Jesus is Jesus. is what his good friends call him. Is what his close yeah. friends call him. I think it would be good for yeah, his, generally his, in society for people to start referring to the man who owns Amazon as Jesus. As Jesus, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And I agree. His close friends call him Jeff Jesus, and his acquaintances call him Jesus Bezos. I just call him Jesus Jesus. The Church of Amazon and Latter-day Saints. You could order fish and bread on Amazon. <laughs> I've done it before. Mm-hmm. Just he give it, it Jeff just, Bezos giveth his blood. So Anthony, oh, can we call you Anthony, or we prefer to be called Gregory? At this point, um, yeah, please call me Gregory. Gregory, uh, I think, yeah. So Gregory, it, it almost seems like you seem to be taking a lot of advice from us. Is that part of the program? Who, are you, who's who are you talking? I'm talking to? to the man holding a plunger in his hands. Uh, I'm sorry, I've, i uh. Well, it definitely sounds like you're having a mental breakdown, and uh, I feel like I shouldn't be taking advice from you anymore. I feel like I should be retreat no. further into my cocoon. Uh, no, because no, 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 Because I no. feel like your advice has been kind of a lie. Please don't. And right now, you know, just saying his name, uh, Tony Hawk, it makes wait. me feel like I'm a good, good boy. Wait, just wait till step five. No, no. Step five. If it feels like your house of cards is falling, and uh, falling very hard. Do you have and, anything uh, in your bathroom that, like, needs to be fixed? Like a toilet that's clogged, or a, or a sink that won't drain, or it could retile? Right. I, well, this is, uh, this is getting pretty sad. I'll be honest. Uh, listening to you uh, is making me sad. And I don't want to be sad in my cocoon. This cocoon is warm. This cocoon is comforting. It is not a place of sadness. And, and listening to you talk about uh, wanting a plumbing job is making me very sad. So I don't know if I can continue this. Well, Anthony, the the, the, no. the door of Gregory, whatever your name is, you know, you could take your hand and you can, you can go. You know, uh, thank you for being on the podcast. Don't thank him for that. Yeah. This must be devastating to you. This must uh, be like watching your whole life crumble in front of your eyes. And uh, it really is. Frankly, you deserve it on all, on all levels. And uh, you make me sick. 